let's quickly build the footer or credit component so I can show you that syntax, which is called stateless component syntax. Let's create a new file in component called credit.js. I will import React from React. I'll first create the class component and then modify it into a stateless functional component so you can see the advantages of the syntax shorthand. Class credit extends react.component. We have a render method. And inside this render method, we want to return. I'll just create a div with the class name of credit. And inside that, I will have a paragraph tag with our text, but we want to wrap this into a link. So here we'll wrap all of this into a href of, um, if I go in my data file, I have the URL here. We'll just copy this. Okay. Now you will notice something. If I output the paragraph tag like this, because React stripped all the empty spaces, we will have the link actually touching the column here. Before I can do anything, let's export our credit component. And inside app.js, just like I imported the names list, I will import credit from credit. And just like that, now I'm loading my credit. I'm not passing any props, so that should just work. Let's have a look and see if our credit is now loading in our app. Well, here we go, perfect. We've got a footer component. But as you can see, the list column and the link are actually touching right there. So there's one way, there's a few different ways to create an empty space in uh, React. Just output some uh, curly braces to get some JavaScript and just pass an empty string with one space, just like this. And once you're familiar with React, you'll see that in tons of places and you instantly think, yeah, fair enough, that's a space, no problem. So just like this, now we're gonna have our space. Here we go. All right, so now here comes the interesting part. Let's refactor that component from a class component into a stateless component. So the first thing I can do, instead of class, we will have now a constant, which is an actual function. Now what we can do is actually remove the render method because the function actually just returns some JSX. I'll indent that in. If you wanna do some uh, data manipulation, you can You can do it here, but if you actually don't need, in this case, we don't need to do any data preparation. So we can just, we just want to return that. In that case, you can actually remove the return statement and immediately, now that function actually just returns our JSX. And you can even take it one step further. You can actually get rid of the curly braces. So if you look at it now, it's actually literally a function that returns the JSX markup that we want, nothing else. And it's uh, a great idea to do your components that way if you don't need any of the lifecycle events because it's very readable. The last thing we can do is instead of exporting here at the bottom, we can actually export default and Remove this. It should still work exactly the same. So what I'll do is I will copy that chunk of code and I'll backtrack with Control Z a few times so you can see what we had before and after. Here we go. So we went from all of that code that are coming out to this. Pretty cool. All right, in the next video, we'll continue moving parts into different components. And finally, we'll start to add some interactivity when you click on a name and get the actually application state going.